My parents sold me to get revenge. My name is Gina. If just a couple of years ago I was told that people can be so easily and simply taken and sold, I would not have believed it, especially when it came to children. I have always believed that parents and children have a special bond, where there is no benefit, no evil, where there is only sincerity and faith. But my parents let me down. I'll tell you more about it. Gina, are you awake? Hurry up for breakfast or you'll be late for school. Well, have you heard anything about the money? Uncle Ted asked. No, Ted, my sister hasn't been in touch for two months. I don't know what happened there with her husband, but their daughter, whom we support, also makes me quite tired. Rena replied, It used to be good, Ted said. Her parents sent us money for her and we lived on it. You know I can't find a job. I know. Ted, you've been sitting at home with me for four years. We're lucky that my sister is stupid enough to send us so much money. Others would not believe that it takes so much for a child. Thank you, Auntie. Your signature pancakes are as good as ever. Have you heard from Mom and Dad? Not yet, honey, but I know it's okay. My heart feels it. If she calls you, do you know what to say? Of course, Auntie. I remember that I need money for my maintenance and quickly. That's a good girl. Now run to school. You're so good at leading a child by the nose. What you can't do for money. It's easier for me to convince her that I love her than to find a job. <laughs> Ran to the school bus, got on, said hello to everyone, and put on headphones. My parents left for work almost three years ago. It was our first such long breakup. They couldn't take me with them because the jobs they were getting took 99% of their time. They both worked for the same big corporation, and they made good money. But we paid the biggest expense by not seeing each other. To avoid risking me, they decided to entrust me to my beloved Aunt Rena and her unemployed husband, Ted. They have no children, and they never wanted them. They like to drink, often swear, but then make up. My parents send the money exactly five times more than they really need. They thought I didn't understand. I understood everything, and so did my parents. It's just that the money was my guarantee that they wouldn't touch me, and they will be treated as expected. Hi, Gina, how are you? How are your parents? Hi, there's no news. I'm beginning to think they've run away from me. Come on, it's not my mom who ran away from the hospital. What I love about you, Elin, is that you always find something to calm me down. <laughs> How can you do that? She's just a kid. She doesn't deserve this. Is that why you didn't call? Okay, okay, let me adopt her. Stop it, Lisa, you can't. I said no. Suddenly, my aunt hung up the phone, and I realized that she was talking to my mother. I ran up and started asking who called, but my aunt was crying and crying and she wouldn't calm down. I took her hands and we sat down on the sofa, and my aunt told me that my mother and father had decided to sell me to some people because they couldn't support me anymore. Is this a joke or something? I'm sorry, honey. I scolded her, begged her not to, but she said if I disobeyed her, they would kill Ted. That can't be right. Why didn't she talk to me? Because I didn't want her to. She didn't want to talk to me either, so she told me to say goodbye to you. I told her I wanted to adopt you, that I didn't need the money, but she wouldn't listen, and she said again that Ted was finished and that was it. I was in shock. I never would have thought that my parents would betray me like this. I lived in a strange family for a whole week, and during that time, I didn't say a word. I don't know why they needed me, probably to work and look after their children, because there were six of them in that family. The week seemed endless. At some point, I thought that maybe they were all making it up, that no one really gave up on me. I wanted so much to believe that it was true. My new foster parents didn't want to let me go to school. You're not going anywhere. Why do you need an education? You already have a job. You'll work for me. If you don't let me study, I'll run away, and I will try to escape every day until I do. I had to learn, and they let me, or I would have run away. 
And the day I walked into the classroom, my mom was waiting for me. She threw herself at me, hugged me, kissed me, but I didn't move. I was so angry, so upset, tears welled up in her eyes. Did you finally come to say goodbye yourself? What? What are you talking about, honey? I called you for three months in a row, but no one answered. It wasn't easy to get away. Dad is still there, but I came to take you with me. With you? Are you kidding me? You told them to sell me. What? Sell you? Who told you that? Gina, you have to tell me everything. The story ends with my aunt and uncle being arrested. They cheated me out of money, didn't pick up the phone from my parents, and didn't respond to messages. They turned out to be even bigger crooks. Well, my mother took me with her. Now I live with my parents, as it should be. I realized that I was wrong about them. Your real family will never betray you. Tell me, did you guys like my story? Write your opinion about it in the comments below the video. Do not forget to like it, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel. Tell me, what are your parents like? I recently thought about my own because I grew up in a foster family, which is very happy. Why? I'll tell you now. My name is Audrey, and I was born in a small village in France. My parents were poor. My mother stayed at home because of me, and my father worked as much as he could and where he could. I remember how often they quarreled over money. My mother wasn't happy that they were not rich, and my father wasn't happy that the house was a mess and there was nothing to eat. Somehow, everything was interconnected. Because of non-payment of taxes, there was no water at home. And if there was no water, then what kind of cleaning was there? So my mother said. And so every day, every time, they found a reason to fight. My parents swore amongst themselves and at the same time forgot about one detail. Me. As a result of the conflicts, I learned to be invisible. And when I grew up a little, I found a place where I could hide from everyone. Be alone with myself. I believed that one day I would be fine, but I didn't know how yet. I never thought I'd have to do more than leave. And then one day, when my father once again lost his job, there was hunger in the house. We ate all the supplies, there was no one to ask for help, so the three of us were going through a difficult time. Once I asked my mother if it was always going to be like this, but she said no. According to her, they married for love, and then things went downhill. Dad used to have a firm, but his partner set him up with a business, took the business, and left the debts to Dad. Because of them, they had to sell a lot, give away a lot, and this small house was left by my mother's mother as a legacy. That's all that was left. Because of the Great Depression and a series of failures, my parents gave up. I still remember that terrible feeling of hunger. We could not eat for weeks. There was no work at all. My mother even went begging and sometimes managed to bring home food. Then they decided to sell the house and we stayed in a barn nearby. The proceeds from it helped us to survive for some time, but my father, instead of finding a job, began to drink. Then my mother joined him. I thought that hunger was the worst thing in the world, but I was so wrong. It turns out that even worse than hunger is drunk parents. So we stayed outside. Then I couldn't stand it and went to find a job myself. I found one in a nearby village. At first, the family I worked for as a cleaner had a lot of questions, and I didn't tell them that my parents were drunks. I just said that I only have my mother and she is ill, so I have to work for a living. The hostess felt sorry. They not only paid me money, but also fed me. And sometimes I got clothes from them. Worn, but good. It seemed that everything was more or less better. As soon as I thought about it, my father followed me one of these days. When he came out of a binge for a couple of days, he asked where I was getting the food. He had little faith in my honest earnings and thought I was doing worse things than drinking. So he followed me broke into someone else's house, and even in this form, began to talk nonsense about the fact that those people were so bad that they take advantage of my stupidity. When the hostess clarified the situation, he stood silent and did not know what to say. And then he blurted out, give me a bag of potatoes instead of Audrey. Can you imagine my reaction? I just didn't know how to react or what to say. Tears welled up in my eyes. I couldn't believe my own father would do something so mean. 
Are they ready to get rid of me just like that? What have I done? Why don't they like me? This was the strongest blow for me, because the feeling of loneliness is the worst in the world. The lady looked at him and asked him a few more questions, and my father explained that he and my mother had nothing to eat and nothing to provide for the child. You'll be better off here. You are better than us, he said. Despite the hurt, I didn't ask him to change his mind or try to run after him. Instead, I ran to my hiding place and let my emotions run wild. I screamed so loud that even the spiders were scared. I guess the owner found me by my voice. Her name was Aunt Iris. Emphasis on the first I. She reassured me, said that she was very sorry, and asked me not to leave them and not to hold a grudge against my father. It was hard to do. All of it. But at some point, I realized that she had nothing to do with it. I calmed down and went home with her. On the way, I asked her if she agreed, and she said yes. My father sold me into slavery, I said, but she interrupted me, suddenly hugged me, and said that she would only be happy to have a daughter like me. I was very surprised because I was a complete stranger to them, and Iris asked if I would mind if she tried to be my guardian. I didn't have a choice anyway, so I agreed. And you know, from that moment on, my life changed for the better. That evening, she introduced me to her husband and two children, a daughter and a son, and they greeted me warmly. We actually already knew each other, but now I was a different status. Her husband, Uncle Tom, hugged me and invited me to dinner. It had been a long time since I'd eaten such delicious food. They lived well, but I was not impudent, did housework, was polite, for which I was very well treated by everyone. My foster family was a hundred times more kind and more forgiving. I felt really happy there. I was given a room, my aunt washed me in the bathroom, cut my hair, braided it, put on a new clean dress, and the children gave me a couple of toys. Even though I was older than them, they said they liked me for a long time. I was grateful for everything. The sediment was still there, but I was recovering quickly thanks to their good attitude. I was just lucky that it happened like this. A month later, I was sent to school. I already forgot about my past life, like a terrible dream. But this dream did not think to let me go just like that. When I came home from school, Aunt Iris was standing on the doorstep. She was loudly arguing with someone. It was my mother. It turns out that a month later, she came for me, realizing that they had made a mistake. I didn't want to go back, and my aunt didn't want to let me go. But my mother threatened to go to the police. She promised to go to the police and accuse the new family of kidnapping her child. Because I hadn't been adopted yet, on pain of harming my aunt, I shouted that I would not go home with her. I was shattered. I didn't want to go back to the barn. All the way home, my mother swore they were done with alcohol. But they weren't. They realized that I brought them a steady income. They didn't want to work anymore, but they didn't stop drinking. My father told me to get a job again. I knew it. My life had become worse than it was with them before I left. They demanded money every day, and I worked harder and barely slept. And at the moment when I had almost no strength left, I ran back to my place and saw Aunt Iris there. My mother forbade us to meet, so she came there every day and waited for me. When I saw her, I cried a lot. I wanted so much to go to them again. Aunt Iris came up with a plan to save me, and I listened to her and agreed. I came home late that night. My parents were furious. They started asking about the money from the doorway, and I threw everything I had at them. My father said, is that all? You worked all day and only earned five euros? Are you kidding me? Where is the rest of the money? He shouted. I told him it was all I had, but he didn't believe me. Then my mother came and searched my pockets, and I told them that they had no right to do this to me. But dad said he would do what he wanted, because I was their legitimate daughter. You sold me for a bag of potatoes. You make me work so that I can bring you money for alcohol, I shouted. But they just laughed and then said it would always be like this. And Iris burst through the door with Uncle Tom and the police. Yes, we did it. These are at least three crimes. The sale of a minor, the exploitation of child labor, the lack of living conditions for a child. After that, 
they were taken to the police station. There were a lot of legal proceedings. My parents spent all their time trying to keep me from being officially adopted. It was a matter of principle. Then, our lawyer went to the trick and made sure that they were deprived of their parental rights. I knew I wouldn't see them again from then on, but I didn't need to. Life is kind. It gave me a second chance, and I couldn't help but take it. My foster family still treated me warmly. I continue to attend school. My aunt goes to all the meetings. I share my secrets with my new mother. Sometimes, when we want to chat, we go to my spot and have a picnic under the shade of a spreading tree. You know, there is an incredibly beautiful sunset there. It's great that I'm not the only one watching it now. What would you do in my place? Hi, my name is Rachel, but you can call me Ray. I would like to share a story with you, but I don't tell it to many people because I'm ashamed and embarrassed. But now I've reached a turning point in my life when I've begun to understand that sometimes some things in life do not depend on us at all. And all we have to do is accept them or reject them. I hope for your support. Write your opinion in the comments. It is priceless for me. Let's start with the fact that I grew up without a father. I've always, as I can remember, had a mom. I didn't know any other relatives, and it was perfectly normal for me to live like this. My mother and I had each other, and we didn't need anyone else. As time went on, I grew up, and along with it, I had questions about who my father was. But at each such moment, my mother reacted the same way, with aggression. She always called him a goat and said only that he had cheated on us, but how he cheated, why and when, she did not tell. I knew it was bothering her, so I only asked about dad two or three times. The last time, I got a slap in the face. By the way, this was also the norm at home. My mother often punished me, and for various things. For example, a poorly washed floor, not neatly folded dry clothes, and once, I washed her white blouse and my sweatpants. I swear, I didn't even see that her blouse was in the washing machine, so I got hit so hard. I didn't go outside for three days after that, because the bruises on my hands didn't go away. My mother beat my hands with a belt. Yes, she was always strict, terribly demanding. Each morning started with screams and ended with them too. And sometimes she screamed so much that she lost her voice. And then it was my fault again. I really wanted to be an obedient girl. I studied hard, always cleaned the house, cooked as best as I could, never went out with friends, as long as my mother was in a good mood. But every day I was waiting for the same thing. Screams, quarrels, screams, punishments. When my mother was particularly angry, she said that I was a burden that pulled her down, that if I wasn't there, she would be happy. How did that make me feel? Of course, it was terrible. I ran into my room after such words and cried all night. But then I calmed down and told myself that my mother was just tired. I still loved her, if only because she was the only one I had. Yes, we did not live very well. Sometimes it was barely enough to close all the accounts and buy food. That's also why we didn't allow ourselves much. But one day, there was a happy accident. Some unknown uncle came to our house. He called himself a lawyer and informed us that he worked for my mother's father and that he died, but left an inheritance in the form of a house for me. His granddaughter. It was a small house in another city. The lawyer brought a letter with warm words of regret that they did not communicate all these years, that he asks for forgiveness and gives us the property. I was standing in the other room at that moment and heard everything. How happy I was! Do I have a home of my own? I was so happy. I wanted to go to college, or at least move to another city and live, now that I have my own house. I was ready to squeal with joy. Mom signed the necessary documents and without really saying anything, took the keys and slammed the door. I ran out of the room happy, wanting to hug my mother and congratulate us on the purchase. Then I got slapped again. Why are you running? This is not your home. It's mine by right, and I will do what I want with it, she shouted. 
I begged her not to do anything wrong, but she said that I was underage, so she had the right to dispose of it without my knowledge. In short, my mother, as it turned out, held a grudge and resentment against her father due to the fact that one day they had a big fight and she left home. Grandfather didn't even try to stop her, so she didn't go back. Then she met my father, who, after finding out about her pregnancy, left, and since then, she has been angry with the whole world. I tried to persuade her not to sell the house, but she wouldn't listen. My mother sold it, along with my future, my plans, and dreams. She felt that it was more important for her to close debts and loans with this money, so she did. And the rest of the amount my mother spent somewhere, but definitely not on me and not on the house. I have no idea what she did with it. The college that I had dreamed of for so long was also behind me, and at that moment, I realized that I no longer had anyone to help me. Summoning all the will in my fist, in my senior year, I began to look for places for a free education. I applied anywhere just to be accepted. I couldn't and didn't want to stay at home with my mother, because it became more and more difficult to talk to her every year. We didn't have a connection, and over the years, my mother and I became even more withdrawn. Besides, I couldn't forgive her for doing this to me, to my future. At that time, I was determined to leave and take care of myself on my own, because it wasn't safe to stay with her. That's what I did when I graduated from high school. I still got into a good college thanks to tests, although I was not physically active. I did not play sports. I do not have a creative gift, but I am smart. I studied a lot and always did everything conscientiously. I was accepted to the faculty of physiology, which I was happy about. I told my mother the day before I left. It was a terrible scandal, but I didn't listen to her. I just packed up and left. Ask me how I lived? It was hard for me because I didn't have much money and work, but I got out of it, got into debt, sold some of my things, and made some money over the summer. This was enough for me for the time being, but then I got a scholarship. In general, why I decided to share my story with you is so that you do not give up and do not betray your dreams. You know, not all parents are capable and have the ability to take care of their children. This happens and we either accept it or don't. For example, I could not accept it and did not want to. Since then, a couple of years have passed and my life has changed dramatically and I am happy. And as for mom, she lives in the same way and in the same place, still works and doesn't want to see me. But I understand that this won't always be the case. She probably needs more time to digest the information. Oh no, in no case did I leave her, as she says about me and my father. I just ran away to arrange my future. Is that so bad? What would you do in my place? Share your opinion, please. I'm waiting for your comments and likes. Hi, I'm Billy. You know, I recently experienced such a shock. What I'm about to tell you means a lot to me. I would never have thought in my life that something like this could happen to me, but it happened, and now I need time to think about everything. I hope for your support. I was born in a good family. My parents are simple hard workers. My dad works as a manager in a grocery store, and my mother is a waitress. Yes, we are not particularly rich, but we always lived together, did not fight, did not argue. We said with confidence that we were happy and this was true. Besides me, my parents don't have any more children because they can't support another child, and I wanted a brother or sister, but I was old enough to understand how much money it takes to live. So I didn't demand. I basically never demanded anything. My parents called me a good, obedient child and were happy. I don't know. Maybe it was true? Oddly enough, I have always lived with the feeling that there is someone else in the world who feels me. Yes, I had a feeling that when I was sad, he was sad too. I began to think about the fact that there is a parallel universe where our exact copies live, but perform different actions. I was uneasy at the thought, but at the same time, I couldn't help my feelings. Sometimes I had dreams that I was living with people I didn't know, calling them my parents, but I wasn't very happy there. In general, I feel good there, but I didn't often get paid for something. I felt unfair to myself and woke up from this discomfort. 
I was terribly unpleasant after such dreams, and I saw them many times. They were all different, but the point remained the same. I'm in a strange family, where I feel bad. Do you know what happens when you have nowhere to go and you decide to just close yourself in? It was the same in the dream. I didn't pay much attention to them, even though I wasn't in the mood every morning after such dreams. My mother knew what I was dreaming and tried to help me cope with my emotions. I complained that I was tired of such dreams, but for some reason my mother was silent. The only thing she said was that it was just a dream and that you shouldn't believe too much in them, but it didn't help me. So one day I went for a soda at a local cafe and it was a fateful turn in my life. I went there as usual on a day off. I liked to come to our city cafe. It was famous for homemade pies. I ordered as usual, immediately paid the bill and waited for the order. My table was on the street, almost by the road. I stared at the car for some reason and suddenly felt such a heavy gaze on me, as usually happens when you know that you are being watched, but you do not know from where. I instinctively looked for the source and froze in horror. I saw a man in a passing car that I had never expected to see. It was me. I was looking at myself from the window of a passing car. I looked into my eyes and even saw myself sitting there waiting for an order. My heart stopped and almost sank into my heels. The only thing I remember is the license plate. The waiter brought me my order, but I left the money and didn't touch it. I ran home. I ran into the room, sat down at the computer, and began to run the number of the car until I remembered it. Within half an hour, I managed to find the name of its owner. It turned out to be a certain Tom Finger. Then I entered his number in search engines on social networks, where I was given hundreds of options. I assumed that the guy could be his son, so I just need to find a photo of either him or this car. I knew it was like looking for a needle in a haystack, but I had to take the risk. I just had to find that me, because I didn't think so, that's for sure. I sat at the computer for several hours, carefully checking each profile. I saved links that I wanted to check again later. At the end of the evening, my eyes started to get tired, and then my mother came in. She asked me what I was doing, but I didn't explain it to her in detail, so as not to frighten her. I just said I was looking for the right person. She saw the name on the piece of paper and her face changed. It was as if she knew him, but from where? Mom, is there something wrong? I asked, but she froze. Then she asked me how I knew that name. Then I realized that I had better tell you the details. During the story, my mother listened without saying a word, and then said that I should probably rest and went out. It was strange. She had never behaved like this. When she came out, I closed the computer and continued searching through my phone. I kept thinking about my mother's behavior and couldn't figure out what didn't add up. In the end, when I spent two days in a row searching, I finally found it. I found this man. I recognized him from the car. He was standing in the background. He didn't have a photo with his son, only with his wife. According to the last post, they came to our city on business for a couple of months. That was good for me. I intended to find him. And that evening, when I was packing up to leave the house, my mother blocked my way. He and my dad gave me a whole interview, and then they asked me how I planned to find him. I had no idea, but I just knew I needed to do it. Then my mom sat on the couch and said, his name is Eddie, but I didn't understand who she was talking about. And my mother continued, this is your twin brother. That boy you saw, it wasn't exactly your reflection, but almost. You see, Billy, his parents, they, we bought you from them right at the hospital, my mother said. Her words cut deep into my heart, and I didn't know what was going on, but I was so sick that I couldn't even breathe. My mother told me that she went to the hospital that day with that woman, my biological mother. They gave birth together almost at the same time. Only my mother's daughter died, my mother couldn't bear the thought, and then a neighbor on the ward suddenly offered to buy her second child. She began to say that it would be difficult for her to have two, that she wanted one, and even more so her husband, if he found out that she had twins, would still be against it. It was awful. I have so many questions. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. And my mother told me that this decision was not immediately easy for them, but the family in which my brother lives is not the most exemplary. We wanted to save you at least, my father said. They told me that my real father has a lot of problems with the law, and my mother is a very poor woman. I cried when I heard it. I don't know which of us was luckier, but it's now clear to me why I sometimes felt strange. Maybe it's my brother who feels that way there. He's unhappy. Now I knew I had to get him out of there. My mother said they were in touch with those people and they could take me to them, so I agreed. We left immediately. I was terribly nervous and worried, but I was determined. 
The door was opened by my real mother, and she just fainted from excitement. She was holding a glass of wine and looking at us. My reflection peeked out from behind it. Its eyes, even bigger than mine, had been an hour ago. Brother, I told him. He saw me, and then he was going to attack me. Eddie hugged me tight, and I realized that I missed him because we were twins. My mother said it was time for us to be reunited, and my parents should think about how to do it. But all I wanted was for us to take my brother home, because he was unhappy there. Our biological mother finished her wine, and all she said was the amount of money. That was the whole question, both disgusting and sad. But Eddie wasn't upset. Our parents didn't have that kind of money, but they promised to solve the problem. And they didn't let us down. They were really looking for money and almost connected the entire amount. In the meantime, Eddie and I see a lot of each other, and he visits us every day, sometimes even spending the night. And I no longer have anxiety. Now I am confident in my dreams and feelings. My brother is with me now, and everything is fine. And my parents, they are the best, and I am happy that they bought me once. So guys, don't forget to put likes, share your story, and be sure to subscribe to the channel. Hi, my name is Martin. I want to tell you something about myself, or rather, about my parents. So to speak, share with you. I think you'll be as shocked as I am, and it'll be fully justified. Tell me, do you have parents? And what are they? How do they treat you? I know that all of them may not be perfect. Perhaps you often quarrel with them, argue, and sometimes you really want to get out of the house, right? Here, I also have this happen here. Well, it was more accurate. While they are not going to sell me, you know how it is. Like things or products. Here you are tired of a thing, or it's outdated, and you decide to get rid of it in a way that's profitable for you. They decided to do the same thing with me. Unpleasant? Oh, and how unpleasant it was when I found out about it. If you want to know all the details, then listen further. By the way, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Put a like and be sure to write your opinion in the comments. To begin with, I'm the oldest child in the family. There's two other children, my twin brothers, John and Jack. Well, so you can roughly understand how the family treats them and me. If there's something delicious left in the house, then it's given to the twins, and it doesn't matter whether they want it or not. When we go to the store, first to buy all the youngest, and to me, most, is I always tried to look after them, help them with their homework, pick up from school, kindergarten, mug. Sometimes my mother made me cook special breakfasts, where you need to show maximum culinary skills. Yes, yes, it was very unpleasant for me, and parents always have one argument for everything. They are younger than you. Of course, the question, so what, was always forced on me. But I got a couple of slaps on the back of the head for it and haven't asked since. It didn't seem to complain much. I even thought it was all right to live like this. Until I grew up. Well, then I started to see how life works in other families. I made friends where I saw how all children are treated equally, and it touched me. I never complained to anyone and, of course, did not reprimand my ancestors. I didn't want to be any extra problems. And over the years, the resentment grew. And then something even more unpleasant happened. I'll tell you what. This happened a few years ago. The whole family went to a camping trip. Mom bustled around the kitchen all morning making beautiful sandwiches for us. As always, I dragged heavy bags and packed everything in the car. I took a few boxes at a time, and they blocked my path. I honestly didn't see that, that John ran right out to meet me. In short, I crashed into him and all the boxes fell on him. They weren't exactly heavy, but he got hit on the head and lost consciousness. Can you imagine how hysterical my mother was? We immediately went to the hospital, where John was quickly revived. He was okay, just bumped his head a little. I think my mother was even worse off that day than he was. When I got home, I got a beating. I got the full amount, was accused of all the deadly sins, and it seemed that my mother was ready to just slap me, but restrained herself with the last of her strength. Everything I said sounded like a pathetic excuse, so I chose to remain silent. From that day on, my mother didn't speak to me for two weeks. Whenever I didn't try to make up, she ignored me. Two days later, some people came to our house. I saw them talking to my mother about something. My mother was given an envelope. She signed somewhere and called me. She introduced me to these people, Mr. and Miss Jones. These are your new parents, she said. What? What do you mean? I expected a lot that I would be deprived of money, internet, TV, dates with friends. Not that I'd be sold. At this moment, all the childish resentments, misunderstandings, and anger woke up in me. I felt so broken, so unnecessary, and it was terrible. I couldn't believe my mom would just sell me out like that. All she said to me at parting was that they were good people and that they were rich. I packed my things, still in a state of shock, and left the house. No one even said goodbye to me. I got in the car and we drove. I was silent all the way. 
even though these people tried to talk to me. They were very nice, tried to please me in every possible way, offered to stop by some stores to buy anything, but I didn't even know what to do now. How is this possible? When we got home, they showed me my room. I didn't leave it for three days. I didn't want to eat or drink. My new parents were worried. They tried to feed me, lured me with goodies, but I refused flatly. I needed time to digest the events. I was shattered, and then I decided to take some pills. It occurred to me that if my parents didn't need me, then who did? I found something in the medicine cabinet and drank, lay down on the bed, and felt how bad I was getting. The new mother came running into the room just as I was about to pass out. I woke up in the hospital, and they were giving me IVs. My new parents were sitting next to me, crying. Surprisingly, they were crying for a child they barely knew. Why? When I came to, my parents, they were very happy. They kissed me, hugged me, and scolded me for what I had done. My mother wiped away her tears, told me never to do it again. It was nice. For the first time in my life, I felt that someone needed me. In the end is when I started feeling better. When I got back to their house, I noticed that they had a really nice house and that they were so nice to me. My new dad showed me all the rooms, allowed me to go to his office sometimes, and my mom took me to the shops and dressed me up. Yes, I felt a little different in attitude, love, awe, and warmth. It was strange to feel comfort from strangers more than from one's own parents. My mother would read me interesting books at night. My father would meet me after school. And every day, we would build me a new bike from scratch. It was so cool to do something for yourself with your own hands. So about six months passed, and one day, my old parents came to our house. That mother was crying and asked me to come back. She said she made a mistake and regretted it. Come back to our house, son. We miss you, she said. The new mother got up from her chair and indignantly told them to leave the house. My old mother took an envelope of money out of her pocket and threw it on the table, saying that they'd changed their minds. We don't need money, she said. Ah, is that so? All your life you've been abusing him, hating him, humiliating him in every possible way, selling him to us for a measly $10,000, and now you have decided to take him away? allegedly out of good feelings? Do you think I don't know that my son is being offered $500,000 to someone who will lead him to an old man Francis? My mother shouted. I sat there and didn't understand what was happening. Old mom wiped her eyes and started talking to me, like she misses me so much and loves me. I asked the new mother who Francis was. Then my mother told me that in fact, when I was born, I had real parents and they were my new parents. It so happened that my grandfather, Francis, being a very influential man, told his son to give his first child to him to raise. He planned to take the child and to take it to another country to raise as their heir to the empire. But my parents loved me very much, so they didn't want to give me up. They left me with a babysitter named Selena to hide me for a while. And when my parents came back for me, I was gone. Selena said that I was stolen from her. But in fact, she sold me to people who couldn't have children of their own. I grew up in a new family, but when I was nine years old, my parents had their own children and I fell by the wayside. And then I became a burden. We've been looking for you all these years but we had to do it quietly, without making any noise, so that your grandfather wouldn't take you away from us, and he seems to have found out about you, and is now offering half a million dollars to catch you, the father said. My old parents pretended they had nothing to do with it. There was silence in the air. I still didn't really understand what was going on, but my real mom sat down next to me and hugged me. She said there was no way in the world she was going to give me up to anyone now. The guests got up and left, with the psycho taking their money again, and were now deciding what to do and how to hide from the annoying grandfather. This is my story, friends. So now I'm even glad that I was sold, because I got my own parents, and also became rich. Hi everyone, my name is Stan, and I want to tell you about how I was sold into a rich family. Sounds both good and not so good, right? Well, I have a whole story there involving pains that never came to fruition. Interested to know how it happened? then watch my story until the end. As you probably realized, I grew up in a poor family. I don't have a father. My mother said there essentially wasn't one. She got pregnant by a guy who disappeared almost immediately. She decided to give birth to me, but it was very hard, although she didn't complain. My mother is a very smart woman. She was always twisting and turning in her life to survive, and she was very good at it. She did all sorts of things, once, she even got into a marketing pyramid scheme. If you have not heard of it, I advise you to read it. It has its own elaborate scheme built on money and idle chatter. My mother was not afraid to invest all of our money there. And at the last minute, not only did she get her money back, but she was also left with a big profit. Yes, our life was not ideal because we had to lie to someone all of the time. 
but it was necessary to survive. I was so used to it that for me lying was almost my main tool for survival. The people who tried to deceive my mother never understood how she did it, because everything seemed to be according to the rules, but they lost and we didn't. Sometimes my mother would get serious people to cheat. She would play poker with them and win. That money was enough for us. We even accumulated a small fortune and planned to buy ourselves a house or an apartment. You know, sometimes I got tired of our lifestyle. I wanted a simpler and quieter life, but we were not destined to live any other way. Except for that one day. When my mother and I returned from our walk, we found that our rented apartment had been burglarized. They had taken everything, even the furniture. And no matter how many times we went to the police, asked our acquaintances, nothing helped. And as they say, the problem does not come alone. For the broken doors and windows by burglars, the owner of the apartment showed us a list for repairs. There was an impressive amount of money in it. He promised to act badly if we didn't pay. In short, we had to get a lot of money right away and now. What to do? We thought about it for a long time. No one would lend us money and it would take too long to work. And then my mother remembered that she had a very rich acquaintance. Her name was Mrs. Thatcher. She was an old lady that my mother had met her at a casino and they had become friends. Of course, Mrs. Thatcher was a peculiar aunt, but she had money. For some reason, she was always asking about me and she liked me. Mum said I looked just like her dead son. And then my mum and I had a plan. We have to use her sympathy somehow. How? We'll go visit her. You behave yourself, you're a smart teenager, so you'll be fine. And then what? If she offers to let you spend time with her, read for her, maybe go for a walk sometimes, have lunch, generally act like her son, agree? It's just that she already asked me once if I wanted to sell you to her. Are you serious? Don't worry, little mousy. It's for our own good. She'll play mother-son and bring you back and we'll get our money's worth. And what if she doesn't? Then I'll think of something else. I'll make money and give her the rest of it for you. I'll get you out. Just trust me. All right, if you think that will work, go ahead. We went to her house and she and my mum talked for a long time. And then the old lady called me in. I pretended to be a diligent boy, helped her up from her chair, brought her tea, behaved quietly. We spent most of the day at her place. And at the end, Mrs. Thatcher asked my mother, have you changed your mind about her proposal? Mrs. Thatcher, with all due respect, that's my kid. Well, just think about it. I hear you're in a bit of a bind right now. You could use the money. Your son is coming to live with me, not some stranger. I don't even know how he's going to react. Well, just tell him you're gone. Time will tell. Why would you do that? He's just like my Edgar, my boy. He is a few years older than he is now. The old lady cried, and I stood at the other end of the room pretending not to hear her. My mother put her arm around her shoulders and said, I'll think about it. We left the house and went back to our place. A week later, my mum started a rumour through their mutual acquaintances, as if we were left on the street, starving and not eating anything at all. My mother brought artificial blood, put some on her hands, and we went to Mrs Thatcher's house. Mum made it look like we were being attacked by bums. Mrs Thatcher had a worried look on her face, and she took us in right away, fed us, gave us clothes and a bath. After a couple of hours, I was sent to bed. And in the morning, my mother came up to me and said she was leaving on urgent business and I would stay here for a while. I knew exactly what she meant, meaning our plan had worked. Mum kissed me and then left, and I pretended to be very, very upset. Mrs. Thatcher calmed me down, suggested a swim in the pool. We went to a restaurant in the evening, and then she gave me a pair of cool new men's evening suits. I was impressed, thought it was really cool. I had never owned a $20,000 suit before. Before we went to bed, we sat down for tea, and Mrs. Thatcher informed me that she had always wanted me to be her son. He used to be great at helping me take care of some business. Would you do me a favor tomorrow morning? Sure, ma'am, anything. There are some people coming tomorrow. They'll ask you to call me. If they ask who you are, you tell them you're my son, Edgar, coming in after a long absence. Take them into the house. Tell the servants to offer them breakfast. Spend time with them, but most importantly, tell them I'm not feeling well. 
so it's a week's notice to sign the papers. What does all this mean? You're going to help me and I'll thank you. Okay, I'll do it. When those people came in, I introduced myself as Edgar. They were at first taken aback, then confused. They couldn't pronounce anything. They asked where I'd been all these years, but I told them I'd been away for some reason. I acted confident because I lied just like I had before. That's what I was used to. They refused to eat lunch, asked for forgiveness many times. Their faces turned pale, then they left. The old lady came out of the room, applauding. She said I'd done everything right. I didn't understand what was going on, but it wasn't hard for me, so I didn't ask unnecessary questions. In the meantime, my mother had sorted things out and had already started a new batch of work. Something to do with the casino, I think. However, it took a little longer than I thought it would. I'd been staying with the old lady for over six months now. I also went to events with her, introduced myself as her son, and over time, she began to call me Edgar, even in private. Well, I was not particularly embarrassed by it. Then my mother came to visit, eight months later. I missed her a lot because I hadn't seen her since the last time I saw her. She said that the old lady was looking for an excuse to say no, and she was succeeding. Mum had saved up money to give her some of it for me. We planned for me to come home, but the negotiations failed. Mrs. Thatcher told Mum that she didn't need the money because she loved me as family and Mum sold me, so now I'm her son. They argued at first, then started fighting and I tried to stop them, but they wouldn't let me have a word. Mrs. Thatcher called Mum self-serving, like here she sold her baby for money and Mum called her schizophrenic. No, I never made it home that night. Then mum promised she would come with the police and Mrs. Thatcher also promised to show the video camera footage of mum taking money for me. One one, nothing to say. Mum asked me to find that tape and delete it. But whilst I was looking, I found something more interesting. There was a folder in the data repository named Edgar from which I learned that he was doing the same job as me, constantly negotiating with people. Then I was able to dig up documents that said the old lady was getting a large sum of money for every month from some foundation. Apparently the fund was in the name of a relative. Then I found a letter saying that as long as Edgar was alive, Mrs. Thatcher would be provided with everything she needed. Any kind of material assistance. So that's why she wanted her son so badly. And that's why she chose me. Because I looked like him. It all came to me. Then I found a video of people robbing our house. Wait a minute, so she did it? She made us come to her for help by just robbing me and my mum. What a sneaky old woman. Just as I downloaded myself a video, getting ready to call my mum, the old woman came into the office. She noticed me and I told her I was bailing. At first, she tried to talk me down, then she threatened to hurt my mum. But I already had my backup and I got the information I needed out of her and recorded it on my tape recorder. A little later, my mother came. We demanded compensation for our wrecked house, losses and moral damage, and we took the check and skipped town. The money was enough for us to buy our own house and live in it for the next 10 years. I agree that the situation was so-so, but the rich have their quirks, as they say. Tell me guys, did you like my story? Write your opinion about it in the comments below the video. Don't forget to like it, share the video with your friends, and subscribe to the channel. Hi guys, my name is Will. Have you ever heard of human beings selling their children? My father is an alcoholic, even though he used to have a prestigious job at the stock market. His name is Cal, and I don't call him by his first name. My mum left us that year and he got drunk, and I was in pain and shock, but I didn't give up. I came home from school, cooked meals, cleaned so that when Cal came home, Everything looked more or less the same. Since we didn't have a little sister in the family, I did all the work since Cal provided for us. But after a couple of months, he was coming home more and more drunk, late and acting like a pig, not crawling into the bedroom, falling asleep right on the floor in the hallway. I couldn't stand it and we fought. Dad, stop drinking already. How many times? Mum's gone, but I'm still here. Why do you need me? Even your mother left. Not only did she leave you, she left me too, but I don't drink. Have you ever even had a drink? Maybe you ought to try it. Here, have a whiskey. 
It's a real man's drink. Who knows, maybe you'll finally man up too. <laughs> I hit the bottle. It flew off and smashed against the wall. Dad got mad. Do you even know how much that's worth? I don't care. Of course, you don't earn it. What's the use of you working? Have you looked in our refrigerator? I only eat school lunches. I eat once a day because there's no food at home. I don't have any money left to support you. Don't you like it? Go back to your mum's or wherever. I don't care. Oh yeah? I'll go myself, okay? Oh no, you don't just walk away. I've spent so much money on you over the years, you owe me. I don't owe you anything. As soon as I finished talking, he passed out. I was so angry, so I went to my room. The next day, he came in drunk again, not only alone. His colleague Stephen was with him. My father pointed his finger at me and he said, that suits me and my wife. My father called over to me and we started arguing about his condition again. And then he was like, you're going to live with Stephen now. No, I'm not. You will, I sold you. I got all misty eyed when he said that. I thought he was joking, started begging him not to do it. I even promised I wouldn't say another word about his drinking. But my father indifferently pointed his finger at the bag and said, get out. I silently gathered my things and Stephen and I drove to his house. My throat was choked with tears. Both my parents had betrayed me. On the way, I asked Stephen how much my father had sold me for, to which he replied, for a dozen crypto coins. What's that? 10 bitcoins to be exact. What the hell is that? It's digital money. If you translate it into dollars, it's not that much. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid your father didn't sell you because he needed money. He wanted to sell you. What do you want me for? My wife Maeve and I had a son your age, and he died of illness two years ago. We can't have any more children, and your father jokingly offered to take you away, and then it turned out not to be a joke. The bastard. I understand you're angry, but you'll be better off with us. My wife will love you. She was glad when she heard about you. You're not my parents. We don't pretend. You can call us by our first names. We will give you love and care. Your father is a good man and an employee, but he will be fired soon. He won't be able to support you anyway. Consider us saving you from starvation. How noble. It just takes time to get used to. And Stephen wasn't lying. As soon as I walked into the house, I felt a whiff of homemade food and it made me cringe. I hadn't eaten normally for so long. Maeve turned out to be kind and nice and they gave me the dead son's room. And it was cool just after a fresh renovation. They fed me, and a week later I had a new phone, bike, and clothes. Stephen and Maeve tried very hard, and though I didn't let them close, often eating in the room, still waiting for them to bring food and say goodnight. I visited the old school. There I went up to a programming teacher and asked him what bitcoins were. He told me in detail about them, also assured me that in a few years they would become very popular and increase in value. I learned that I would be able to withdraw them into real money, to keep capital in the form of cryptocurrency and that they are not taxed, but no one is responsible for that either. All you need is to have an electronic wallet, but if you forget the password to it, consider your money gone. I see. Why do you ask? Just some stuff came up. Share it with me. No, if it works, I'll give you a present. I'll take you up on that. That same night, I went over to my dad's house to check on him and make a plan. He wasn't happy to see me, but he was surprised. Cal was as drunk as ever. I started with simple things and then moved on to what I wanted. I talked to him more, asked him about bitcoins and why he sold me in that particular currency, to which my father replied that he had the money, he just didn't need it. You wouldn't understand me. I'm not asking you to. Why are you here? Go home. You have a new family now. Be happy. So you don't need the bitcoins? No, I don't. I knew my father wrote down all the logins and passwords in one book. So when he passed out, I just ripped out the right piece of paper from him and kept track of the transaction processes every day. After a couple of years, I finally settled into my new place. My father was fired from his job and sometimes he would go to Stephen's house to ask for food and money. And Maeve would feed him out of pity and I wouldn't even say hello. And then one morning I woke up and opened the news and there were all sorts of information about the soaring value of Bitcoin, where one coin equated to $25,000 Yes, yes, yes! I yelled like I'd hit the jackpot, although I had. 
My dad sold me for 10 bitcoins, which means I became the owner of 250 grand in a couple of years. At the same time, without working, I'm a freaking high school kid. Stephen and May freaked out. I asked Stephen if he had any more bitcoins and he said he had a few left. I showed him the news and he was so excited. I told him I wanted to cash out my dad's money. At first, Stephen talked me into giving it to my dad, but I objective. It's my money. He sold me. He sold me out. His own son. We'll give you what you need. You know that. Money is money. That's right. Although he's probably drunk and forgotten. And once we cashed out the money, we came home happy. But Cal broke in the door. Where's my son? Shh, calm down, calm down. You're drunk again. Not drunk enough to realize he ripped out my Bitcoin wallet password page. Where's Will? Let's sit down and talk about it. I'm here, Cal. Ah, you miserable thief. Come and steal my money. Took what's rightfully mine, you mean. How dare you? Give me my money back or I'll... Or else what? What will you do? Sell me again? Get drunk and raise your hands? Starve me to death? What? You've done all you can do. You sold me. Do you know you go to jail for that, Daddy? You sold your child. What will they do to me? Nothing, because there's no one responsible for the digital money. No one is going to punish anyone, okay? My dad fell silent. He sat there in a stupor and didn't know what to answer because I was right. Then suddenly he fell to his knees and begged for forgiveness, calling himself a fool and a scoundrel. All I did was pull the very whiskey I had broken a couple of years earlier out of the bar. Here's my debt. I got it back, I told him. Then I left the room. Dad didn't want to leave for a long time yet, screaming loudly. But then May threatened to call the cops and only then did he come to his senses and take off. I haven't seen him since. You won't believe it, but even my mum showed up. I think my dad did it. Even promised her to split the property if she could get his money back. But no, Maeve chased her away too. Who would have thought that in a couple of years, I'd be living in a nice house amongst great people, taking better care of me than my own parents? Who would have thought I'd be happier than ever even after my father sold me out? So that's what I'm saying, guys. If you've had something like this happen in your life, don't feel bad. It's a gift of life. It means that those people weren't worthy of you. And that, in turn, proves that justice exists. Tell me, guys, did you like my story? Write your opinion about it in the comments below the video. Don't forget to give likes, share the video with your friends, and subscribe to the channel.